sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, at Heinz Field. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up. And they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30 with the Tennessee Titans. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. He quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Pick up at six. Brings up second and four. The last run got six. Now second and four. Roethlisberger will hand to Conner. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. On first and 10 is Connor. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second and seven, Roethlisberger. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. He's going to launch it for Washington. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Super Bowl 49 hero Malcolm Butler. Intercepted by the Titans. They'll take over first and 10 at their own seven yard line. On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That's the receivers that'll spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. From the 16, Tannehill. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Tennessee. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. Derek Henry on the carry. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Tannehill. And he finds Corey Davis. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent. And they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it would have been a long night. 
So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. To throw is Tannehill. A short throw, and it's going to be pulled in by Furkser. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 39. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown out on them. Look out, you've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The run got four, now they deal with a second and six. Running from the gun with Henry. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Tannehill on third down, uncorks one for Davis, and he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down, so let's see what this is about. And, yes, they want the points, so they will decline <laughs> the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple seconds mulling over what the penalty would do I don't even do know why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. Point. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And this is good. Our score, 7 0, Tennessee. Makes the score Titans 7, Steelers nothing. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Now this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for Wright. It'll be a touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 the score as they start first and 10. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Now that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Let 
from the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. On second down, Samuels. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. Samuels, the ball carrier. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. He'll try and run for it with Connor. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. But we tend to give those running backs that were slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now the intended receiver out of the backfield was Jalen Samuels. But it'll be second and goal. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield. They had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line. Second and goal. Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Roethlisberger connecting with James Washington. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get over. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Stopped up at the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second and nine, Tannehill. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Janu Smith. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one a gain of 20 in a first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. 
Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. On first down, Henry. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. Back to throw, Tannehill. That's complete, middle of the field to Humphreys. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. And it's third down. Here's Tannehill. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Tennessee getting the first down on a big play of 18 yards. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Back to the ground now. It's Henry. And he'll slice his way down to the 30 with a pickup of seven. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. These two teams all tied after one. The score tied seven to seven. Working with a second and three. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. They set up the screen for Henry. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see it break down as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be over. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And he's going to go down, sacked right around the 17. Cameron Hayward attacking off the edge that time. Every now and then you just absolutely outguess yourself. Third and inches and they decide not to run the ball, you end up seeing the end result. The end result was not good. They elect to pass and it backfires. Greg Joseph on, Greg Joseph on for the Titans. From the left hash, this from 34. 
The kick by Joseph is good. And the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11 play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Joseph now to kick this one away. Here's Kareth White on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Got an open man, it's Washington. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 33-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That one into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. Call it a gain of three, and that'll make it third and one. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing, but in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. On third down, it's Connor. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. So remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way and is much more successful as well. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Daquan Jones fighting his way home to get the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Now Ben on third and long. Finding his safety valve here, that's complete. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Adam Humphreys deep for the Titans. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. 
at their own. Here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. First down and much more for Henry. And he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. 16 more on that one and another first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because... He is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. On second and 11 now, Tannehill, and right side, Henry's got it. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Complete to I think the best Henry. offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Intercepted. The Steelers take over first and 10. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. Oh, leaping, and he makes the grab. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. It's picked up by the Titans. And the return just out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. Yeah, this is going to be a Titans first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Henry. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. On the carry. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. A 
shotgun snap for Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. On the return, Johnson. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. It doesn't always work out, though. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Roethlisberger got to get his guys to the line as quick as he can. Now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Another try after the first down sack. Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Roethlisberger, and he'll find Washington. That's complete. That's good. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. To throw again is Roethlisberger. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he will have a first down here as they get into field goal range, down just shy of the 20. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good, and that will knock things up here late in the first half. 
Yeah, so they're able to make things level just before half and also leave very, very little time on the clock. And I love the way that you phrased that. Put a little soccer into it, and that's really apropos considering they just kicked a field goal to tie things up. turn and he takes this near the 25 just a little pass there call it the 26 here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively and from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it and I think in this situation that's the proper play but we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out and we will likely not see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, this taken in about four yards deep. And it'll come out to the 25 as Raymond will elect not to bring it out. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and try to figure out which play to run and just lost track and it cost him. Here's Tannehill now on second down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. The sack by T.J. Watt, or as his mother Connie calls him, Trent Jordan Watt. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Third and long. It's Tannehill. Over the middle complete. Brad Smith. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of the first down. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A first down there on a pickup of 25. 
first step. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They're trying for Washington, but the pass intercepted. Picked off here, the 32, 30, 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Tennessee. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. The score, Titans 17, Steelers 10. Greg Joseph. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Now White on the return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And that's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Play action. It's Roethlisberger. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster complete. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good right. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field before breaking to the sideline. What a completion there. Big time arm strength. Very nice route. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. He's taken That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to have five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Off the play fake, here's Roethlisberger. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. It's picked up by the Titans, and his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 44. They begin with Henry. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Uh -huh. 
They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers' 38. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On first down, it's Tannehill. This one caught by Davis. And he's going to get this inside the 30. First down, Titans gain of 12. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second and five now. Tannehill. And he will find Davis. That's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Tannehill finding Davis for a Titan first down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They go option right on second and goal. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was because so many times on an option play, you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip, one cut, and he's grasping it air. But this time, he locked in on him the whole way, took an excellent angle, and his grasp came up with the quarterback. The Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Joseph's got it. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Joseph now to kick this one away. Here's White. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? Ball came long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> the completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, we're not able to find any yardage on that one. The loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. Mike's by four, Mike's by four. Mike's by four. Slack it, 
Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. A sizable gain there, nine yards as they get it back to a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And yeah, that will be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running Running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Forty-two yards on the punt, just two on the return, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans set and ready to go on offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now he's able to break through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the that time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Throwing on second down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. And he's got his man in stride, complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On his Kern, the punter, to send this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Going to throw right side here, complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. 
Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I want to go back to something you said in the first quarter. About is, it, winning. Is, is it a positive? It is a positive. Okay. You know, about winning the turnover battle. As a visiting team, as an underdog, you were right. They've done just that, and look where it's gotten them. It's part of the formula. When you go on the road, as you mentioned, being an underdog, winning the turnover battle is a big key, and this one's playing out in this one. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Great change up there on the route. It got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him. And the inside half? And he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. And the Steelers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. Now whistles here before the snap, and it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. Situation changes a bit now. First and goal from back at the 10. Ben to throw again. Setting up the screen. This is Samuels. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. I don't know how well our microphones are picking it up for those of you at home, but uh, Charles, you and I can hear it. A lot of groans right now coming from this crowd. I don't know if we're picking up what's happening in the stadium or from the people who are supporting this team at home because it's coming through loud and clear to you and me. This offense, they've been stuck in neutral much of the game. And on that last play, they actually went in reverse. I think this crowd would have liked neutral, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> neutral would have strongly been preferred. They'll take anything positive at this point. Third and goal. And keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. Again, it's Roethlisberger. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked by Kevin Byard. And a great return as they're finally able to take him down. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. At their own 19-yard line. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Bud Dupree, a former first-round pick, in on the stop. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Out of the gun, Tannehill. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Titans are in third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth. Now it's first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle a team a little bit as well. Pass interference ruined that series of downs for them. After 
after the penalty. It's Henry. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three corners. No reason to lighten up now. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Now, that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point. So they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. And he will score! Touchdown, Titans! Taking it in from two yards out. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. Joseph now to have the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Titans 27, Steelers 10. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. From the 21, it's second and 10. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. To the right side to Eric Ebron. 
And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he shortened the line to gain. The Steelers try it, but they come up empty on fourth down. And the Titans, they've got the football back, and they've got it in great field position. So first and 10 now from the 30. Derrick Henry. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This will be from 49 yards out. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Joseph now to kick this one away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And no return here for White. It'll be a touchback. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And last time, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. We'll see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result? And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at the 30. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And that one will pretty much erase any hopes of a fourth quarter comeback. With emphasis, interception, return for touchdown. Door closed, locked, reinforced. Joseph on for the extra point. And that stretches the lead to 27. Good. Makes the score Titans 37, Steelers 10.
Greg Joseph. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Takes this about five yards deep. And no return here for White. It'll be a touchback. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Back to the air, Roethlisberger after the pick six. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Now, what a first down pickup of eight. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Here's Roethlisberger. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Steeler. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Roethlisberger on first down. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger. Looking sideline, incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. To throw again is Roethlisberger. Open man, completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 30. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions, it just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass. It's almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a gain of seven. Brings up third and three. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. To throw here, Roethlisberger. 
And that is caught. Well, they're going to see this one to the end. They get a score, but pretty much an exercise in futility right now. Still down big. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. And the lead is down to 20. Makes the score Titans 37, Steelers 17. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. Raymond now on the return. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's strictly for show. We got to play in the catch. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And right side, they're going to go option here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. First down, Titans. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And they were booing Charles by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Heinz Field.